let me give you uh, an important perspective. Jim was of the view, some people were saying to him, so tell us, what would you do? What do you think South Africa should be doing in terms of improving its performance? And he said, visit South Korea. Have a look at what they're doing. And so I looked at this particularly, and I did this side by side, which has been done for the first time. So essentially, if you move your score by, say, one on the global environmental scale of, uh, score scale of one to ten, it's quite significant. It's not easy to move one. So I picked out where are there more than five point differences between South Korea and South Africa. And those are the yellow highlights. Life expectancy, we were at 3.4, South, South Korea at 9.2. Personal computers, 1.1, 7.5. Internet users and internet service, 2.0, 9.3, 0.3, 9.9. .9. Patent applications, so that's R&D related, 0.9, 10. R&D, 2.3, 8. So obviously this is the HTCs, the Samsungs, uh, all of those companies. Now, you know, we can have a lot of conversation about corruption 5.1, 5.9, or openness 3.1 to 5.2, but there's not a lot of conversation you can have about a five-point difference. So you can only say there is a lot you can learn if you focus, and there's a lot of headroom to, to catch up on these numbers. So when we look at South Africa um, in the context of where we're going to be in 2050, this is what the BRICS analysis tells you, that China will be 20% of the world economy uh, in that period. And this is what we define as growth markets, which effectively are a share of global GDP cutoff point above 1%. South Africa is just around that 1% over there. As you see, it's currently at about 0.7%. Okay, so let's talk about Africa because the rise of Africa should be very supportive of South Africa's potential. <clears throat> this is an interesting slide. On the left-hand side, you see the real GDP per capita from 1950 yeah, through to uh, 2012. And we have a real GDP per capita of somewhere around 2,500 in Africa. India has gone from lower than Africa, right? up to, this is on the right-hand side, over $4,000, and China over $10,000, and China is obviously the red line. So you can see that something went wrong in Africa's performance as a whole in the 1950 to 1980 period. However, a lot of this underperformance was due to past weakness, and Africa is now growing rapidly. So you can see Sub-Saharan Africa was growing, uh, in the 1980 to 2000 period at 2.5%, and it's really basically doubling to around 5.6 to 6%. The demographic trends are still extremely favorable, and you see the total population growth rate uh, at around 2.5% relative to in the other BRIC economies. Uh, the important thing when you talk about the BRICs, there's two factors that really determine uh, how the BRICs perform. The one is the age of the number of working population in a country, and the other is the productivity of that population. So this is a very important component, the fact that when we look at Sub-Saharan Africa in 2010, and you compare the bulge of the workforce, you can see the age of the workforce here is getting much greater. So you're going to have a much bigger population of workforce in, in Africa. And this is what you see here. So the working age population, in 2020, in Africa, we'll have around 750 million people of working age population in Africa as a whole. And that is a similar number over there in Sub-Saharan Africa. And in 2050, that number will be of just nearly one and a half billion people, working people in Africa. So that is an enormous rise in the next 30 years. And we project that the Sub-Saharan African Growth rate will average uh, around 6.5% over the period to 2050. And remember, if you have a large population growing at this uh, growth rate, that is what drives the size of economies. So you won't be surprised to see an amazing number here, which is that Sub-Saharan Africa, which is seven major economies, DRC, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda, according to that analysis, if it's proven correct, will be the fourth largest economy in the world by the year 2050, representing $15.7 trillion of GDP. 